Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good morning. Here are my disclosures. As you have already um, heard in uh, Jerry's talk, um, there are many products currently in the pipeline which have the primary objective to improve the prophylactic treatment for severe hemophilia A to make it more convenient by less frequent infusions and possibly also to make it more efficacious. And this is not only about um, uh, extending the half-life of factor VIII, as you can see here in the top of the slide, but also alternatives to factor replacement, which have been a big topic in this meeting already. You have heard yesterday Craig Kessler talking about factor VIII, a mimetic bispecific antibody. Um, we have heard about new antibodies against the tissue factor pathway inhibitor, and we will hear more about antithrombin uh, RNAi interference to suppress antithrombin activity. All these three strategies strategies will result in a higher um, uh, concentration of our thrombin in our patients with the goal of making bleeds less likely. But this talk now is focused here on the um, half-life extension technologies beyond factor 8 FC fusion. And there are really two strategies currently in clinical development, first pegylation and second, a single chain construct. I would like to turn to pegylation first. Pegylation is the attachment of uh, the polymer um, polyethylene glycol to peptides, proteins, antibodies, and other therapeutic um, uh, molecules. And pegylation results in an altered physiochemical property of this molecule, including size, conformation, electrostatic binding, hydrophobicity, etc. And as a result of this, um, pegylated molecules can have increased drug stability, enhanced protection from proteolytic degradation. They can be saved from renal clearance to prolong the half-life of the molecule. Sometimes it has um, even been observed that pegylated molecules are less immunogenic than others, although I have to remind you that PEG itself sometimes is target of immune responses, but I will come back to this later. You see that pegylated proteins are um, uh, quite frequent on the market, and here is a list that is not even exhaustive with uh, the first product approved in 1990. Um, many different indications across medicine, and you see here from the same review that most of the proteins or peptides that were targeted here had a very short um, half-life. So actually, the longest half-life of this list here is uh, 3 and 24 hours, but most of the proteins here, or peptides, have half-lives in the order of minutes. With pegylation, most of these products experience a several-fold increase in their half-life. You see here maybe for uh, PEG uricase from 3 to 72 hours, and this translates into uh, um, uh, impressively prolonged half-life of these proteins. The downside of pegylation may be that the specific activity of an enzyme or a cytokine is reduced. And so um, the design of pegylated molecules has also already uh, to take into account the retained activity of the specific protein, which here for these examples is actually pretty high. We now turn to the characteristics of the pegylated proteins currently in clinical development. Um, it has already been mentioned, the pegylated um, NHGP, um, this is the development name here, the manufacturer is Novo Nordisk, and this has already been assigned uh, international non-priority name, uh, generic name to Roctococ alpha pegol. And this molecule is built on the B domain deleted or truncated factor VIII backbone. There is a residual B domain of 21 amino acids, and it carries a site-directed um, pegylation of a 40 kilodalton peg that is enzymatically transferred to a unique um, O-glycan here in the B domain of the protein. And this results after thrombin activation into removal of the PEG from the active 8A molecule, preserving its full function. You see here that the specific activity um, has not been reduced uh, by pegylation and that also von Willebrand factor binding is preserved. 
Beyond that, we see reduced LRP binding. LRP is a receptor that is one of the mechanisms resulting in the short half-life of factor VIII. So it is a clearance receptor, and interaction with that clearance receptor is um, reduced, resulting in increased half-life. It has a somewhat lower activation rate by thrombin in the presence of von Willebrand factor, although we do not know whether this may have um, any functional consequences. Um, the rate of cofactor activity, however, in factor 9A cofactor activity is the same as for the parental molecule, and it has similar potency and efficacy in a mouse tail bleeding molecule. Um, in fact, due to the longer half-life, this pegylated molecule protected mice um, longer when given one day before injury or a bleeding experiment. The second product here is the Baxter product. This is a full-length factor VIII uh, molecule based on the structure of um, ATVAID. It is a smaller pack, 20 kilo Dalton, and um, the pack is randomly attached to epsilon, um, lyse, or epsilon amino groups in license throughout the molecules. It can be um, anywhere in the molecule, and on average we have two packs per molecule. The pack, I'm sorry, the pack will um, because it is smaller, cleared in the urine after the molecule has been consumed. For this molecule here, we also see a reduced um, binding to LRP, probably one of the reasons why the half-life is prolonged. We see a similar rate of activation by thrombin and full retention of factor 9A cofactor activity. Also in mouse tail bleeding and carotid artery occlusion models, it works approximately two times longer compared to ADVATE. Next molecule, another pegylated version here is the Bayer uh, molecule based on also a B domain uh, deleted backbone. Um, this pack is even a little bit larger, 60 kilo Dalton pack, and a single molecule here is directed to a mutation introduced into the A3 domain. So there was a, uh, introduced a cysteine here at position 1804. And this molecule was found among 28 variants that were screened um, with the aim of uh, retaining full factor VIII activity and providing efficient pegylation of the molecule. You see that specific activity of this mutant here compared to B-domain deleted parental factor VIII has not been reduced, not before and not after pegylation of the molecule. And you see that von Willebrand factor binding is the KD for that is a little bit uh, lower, but uh, overall preserved. Also, this variant protected mice longer from bleeding in a tail vein transaction molecule. Interestingly, in the original publication um, that appeared a couple of years ago in blood, um, the authors noted that another variant that they had uh, prepared in the development of the molecule had um, uh, some degree of protection against monoclonal antibodies against factor VIII. This molecule, the Bayer 60 kilo Dalton pack molecule, has already been characterized in terms of its capability to be monitored in our laboratories. Here are the results of an in vitro spiking study with factor VIII deficient plasma in this molecule. And you see here that uh, some EPTT regions uh, that are based on elagic acid can be used for monitoring of this pegylated molecule, but other regions uh, based on silica may not. So this may be an important topic for the future when we go on and use these molecules in phase three clinical trials and uh, also in clinical uh, routine settings. The last molecule that I would like to introduce to you is a single chain variant of B domain deleted factor VIII produced by CSL bearing. Um, this molecule here has an, um, uh, a design at the B domain fusion site that um, uh, remains at uncleaved during biosynthesis and also in circulation. But after thrombin activation of the molecule, you see that it takes the natural conformation of the heterotrimeric factor 8A complex. This molecule has actually been designed according to CSL bearing not to prolong its half-life, but to improve the binding to von Willebrand factor. And uh, this is what you see here on the right-hand figure. Willebrand factor binding is increased in this molecule as compared to parental factor 8. It has comparable efficacy in thrombolastography, thrombin generation assays, and also in preclinical animal models. And 
um, we will see later that uh, the improved binding of Tufan Willebrand factor may even translate into a longer half-life. Now, with all the molecules um, being uh, on the table, we turn now to uh, some clinical data. First, um, the uh, 60 kilodalton pegylated uh, factor VIII molecule um, produced by Bayer. You see here the design of the phase one clinical study in patients that were previously treated for at least 150 exposure days had severe hemophilia A. Um, these patients were, had a washout phase, then received conventional factor VIII at a given dose, then again a washout, and then multiple doses of the new molecule to characterize its safety and also pharmacokinetics. Here you see the PK graph of the molecule, the um, uh, regular uh, factor VIII molecule here um, in light blue, and you see that both after a single dose and after multiple doses of the pegylated molecule, the um, activity over time curve is above the parental molecule. And this is true for both doses tested here, 25 units per kilogram and 50 units per kilogram. You see here uh, a graph representing the individual half-lives the patients in the study had, and you see that uh, more or less all patients had an increase in half-life and that there was also a correlation between the half-life on uh, conventional factor VIII and the pegylated version. So patients with already a good half-life take this also with them when they are switched to um, half-life extended factor VIII molecules. And this is a more general theme not only for the pegylated molecules but also if, as you have seen for the FC fusion molecule. And HGP, the 40 kilodalton um, uh, pegylated factor VIII molecule produced by um, Novo Nordisk. Um, I go right to the um, uh, PK data here with this molecule. You see a half-life of 18 hours compared to 11.7 hours by the previous factor VIII molecule. And uh, this results in a half-life uh, ratio or extension factor of 1.6. This may not seem very impressive, but you, actually, if you look at the bottom of the table, you see that the time um, after 50 units per deciliter to get back down to 1% factor activity is increased from 3.7 to more than six days. So this is actually a, a two-day gain in time above 1%. And this has actually been translated into the design of the phase three clinical trial. It has not yet been published in full, but uh, will be presented for the first time by Paul Jean Grande later today, and I refer you certainly to his talk here um, at 2.15 uh, p.m. in room 714. And you see here that uh, with the extended time to 1%, the trial was designed in a way that 50 units per kilogram were administered every four days to 175 patients with severe hemophilia A. They had in the trial a small on-demand treatment group of 12 patients, and you see here that the median annualized bleed rates of these 12 patients was as we expect in the order of magnitude of 30 bleeds per year. And with this um, extended half-life um, prophylactic regime of treatment every four days, the annualized bleed rate was just 1.3. And this compares favorably to other um, uh, prophylaxis uh, annualized bleed rates that we see nowadays with the many factor VIII concentrates that are currently in clinical trials and um, have been reported. Once bleeds occurred, this molecule was also used to treat them um, on demand, if you like, and 96% of the um, bleeds were successfully treated with just one or two infusions of the molecule, which is very similar to um, uh, factor VIII molecules that are currently on the market. The half-life was confirmed to be 18 hours, and uh, the trough levels obtained in steady state during this prophylactic regime was 8% on average. 
The safety was unremarkable here. Um, the molecule was well tolerated, no safety concerns. One patient developed an inhibitor out of 175, and the investigators, as you will hear later, considered this to be in the order of magnitude of what we expect in previously treated patients. I've collected here all the different half-lives of all the different molecules discussed so far. In red, um, the conventional molecules in the study, you see that there is some degree of variation according to the study, and in uh, green, what has been gained by the modification of the molecule. And you see that more or less they all end up with a half-life that does not exceed 18 hours. And as already mentioned um, by the in the previous talk, this may have to do with the half-life or the clearance of von Willebrand factor. We know that all these molecules bind to von Willebrand factor, and it looks currently like um, if we extend the half-life, we can only reach the half-life of von Willebrand factor because we do not alter the clearance of von Willebrand factor by any modification of the factor VIII molecules so far. A few words about safety. Pegylation is, of course, um, uh, a new treatment paradigm in hemophilia. So far, there have been no PEG-related safety issues being raised in the clinical trials. Inhibitor formation in PTP studies, as far as we know, are without unexpected findings. However, Larger PAC molecules have the tendency to accumulate in the body. We do not know whether this may cause any harm, and compared to other PAC medicines currently on the market, we expect that our patients will get much less of the PAC, even in a perspective of treatment for several years. But on the other hand, a lifelong treatment perspective um, uh, is speculative in terms of the results of um, PEC exposure. But um, seeing the progress in uh, recent uh, hemophilia uh, development, we maybe would not expect that uh, pegylated molecules would be used for a lifetime in our patients. Um, fortunately, the progress is much too fast. As I have already mentioned in the beginning of my talk, anti-PEG immune responses have been um, uh, described several times for different medicines. It's important, for instance, uh, for the PEG asparaginase, and antibodies against PEG here can dramatically reduce the half-life of the molecule and also its efficacy, but so far this um, has not been uh, observed in factor VIII clinical trials. With this, I would like to summarize. Pegylation of recombinant factor VIII results so far in a 1.5 or maybe 1.6 or 7-fold increase in half-life, probably um, to a great degree by reducing the interaction with factor VIII clearance receptor LRP. A single-chain construct has already been uh, entered or into clinical trials, which shows increased von Willebrand factor binding and also a somewhat prolonged half-life. The factor VIII half-life extension is currently limited to about 18 hours, which corresponds to the half-life of von Willebrand factor. There is a correlation between the half-life that a given patient has for conventional factor VIII and half-life extended factor VIII, which probably is a result of the predominance of von Willebrand factor clearance on factor VIII half-life. Emerging clinical data from phase three trials indicate that longer dosing intervals and or higher trough levels can be achieved with these molecules, and uh, we hope that this will translate into more convenient and more efficacious prophylaxis. Thank you for your attention.